doesn't like me clicking on that. I plan on putting this out in just as raw as it's coming. Again, because I sense that's exactly what the Lord wants. It's certainly humbling for me, and that's perhaps what the Lord wants. And you can read Ezekiel 4 for flip side of what why he wants it to be to come out in weakness. So let's continue. As it turned out, swine flu began. Uh, I read that. Here we are. Why has the flu occurred during a major recession? The moth in the moth picture Bible called parallels an image. So, here, so I'm about to tell you that, remember this is 15 or so years ago. I'm about to tell you that the, uh, the moth represents this coronavirus, SARS, and these three rep circles represent the many tickle code of, many, of uh, three coins, and it represents a stock market crash paralleling a, a SARS or the coronavirus, some kind of epidemic that was upcoming. Would it be the swine flu? I don't think that was a coronavirus, but it was some kind of virus. The moth in the moth picture code parallels an image of three coins, a mina, a shekel, and a half mina, which in turn depicts the many tekel Bible code. And that, that's a whole huge Bible code. And you can click on that yourself and look at it if you want. The many tekel Bible code was about the war in Iraq, and Saddam Hussein, and everything else, and an upcoming economic depression. Because um, right after he gave me that, about three coins and the writing on the wall and Saddam Hussein, the stock market also began to crash, um, particularly reaching a peak there when the Twin Towers fell. Uh, it was discovered in 2000, February 4th, 2000 to be exact. It just happens that the swine flu is occurring during a severe recession. And if the swine flu flies, then it has the potential of turning this recession into a depression. Well, that's exactly true for today, isn't it? But again, God, God delights in mercy. And well, that's true today. Wow, I wish I could say this so much better. I just really want people to hear those words. I'm going to read them again. Oh, Lord, please help me to speak. Here we go. It just happens that the swine flu is occurring. So this is like happening again, right? It, it just happens that the swine flu is occurring during a severe recession. And if the swine flu flies, then it has the potential of turning this recession into a depression. But again, God delights in mercy. I mean, that is that, that those two sentences are true for right now, right? As it was for that time period. Now, God delayed, but here we are. God is not delaying. As a matter of fact, that was the word he gave me just before the stock market crashed. I, and he started giving me the vision of the lamb. You can go look at that at 1260d.com. I was also saying there's no more delay. The words I speak, I'm about to fulfill. Anyways, why swine flu? Um, well, I really want to go through this slowly. Let me just see if there's anything I can skip over. Yet I know it's all, every, one, every part of this I can tie into now, but do I really want to be that long? Well, I'll read it quickly. I refer to the flu back then as the bird flu. However, this flu is indeed part bird and part swine and part human. This fits the image in the Bible code all the more because, as I said in that article and many other articles, that the moth and the coins in the code also transform themselves into images of two tabernacles or temples. And by the way, now that they suspect that this coronavirus is the result of bats, a similar looking winged creature to a moth. Um, the two tabernacles mirror each other, just as the moth and the coins do. I already said that. The other, the one tabernacle, because oh, I don't have the picture here, but this whole thing branches out into, literally, into the tabernacle, because these judgments are coming forth from God's temple in heaven. And that's what that means. The one tabernacle represents Israel. The other tabernacle represents Babylon. There's two tabernacles. They, two are mirroring one another, one on earth, one on one on representing Babylon, one representing the temple in heaven. One is where lambs were offered, the, the other where swine was offered, as did Antiochus Epiphanes in 168 BC, as per the prophecy of Daniel in Daniel 8, where it speaks of the abomination caused the desolation. By the way, that's the same date that the Lord 
gave me the next writing on the wall in in 1260d i have about 60 articles about that beginning on tishri 15th 2018 you can go to 1260d look those up um and today as i'm saying these things is 483 days from that date from kislev 15th 2018 uh and that actually connects into the picture of the moth because it's it spans a 483 letter period which represents days or years oh boy you have to go back and read it for yourself to know what i'm trying to say there therefore it makes sense for this flu to be part bird and part swine it represents the clean and the unclean merged into one which in turn makes the whole unclean as per the israelite priest of law by the way some of these things i say i'm pretty accurate but i mean 15 years has transpired since I said these things. And 15 years of further receiving, receiving from the Lord and study and, and numerics and codes. And, and I understand a lot better now, 15 years later, than I did here. But essentially what I'm saying here is all accurate. Uh, though I would have slightly tweaked it and just, I would have said it slightly different today because I have slightly better... I have a much better understanding today than I did 15 years ago. Anyways, let's continue. I believe that God is judging the world for its uncleanness and for playing God with genetic engineering. It is quite possible that the swine flu itself was engineered in a laboratory and set loose accidentally or worse on purpose. The novelty of the hybrid strain suggests this possibility, although unproven. The UN even calls this flu the novel flu instead of swine flu. There was even concerns that President Barack Obama catching the swine flu after return from, returning from Mexico, having been escorted by a man who a week later died of swine flu and other ailments. Well, it does not remind you of current events with Trump. Anyways, later another member of Obama's staff did pick, indeed pick up swine flu from having been there in April 2009. See, as I said, I'm reading this stuff. I haven't read this in 15 years. Obama has been passing legislation repeated, repeatedly loosening this type of biological research or pro-abortion laws. An important one was passed on March 9, 2009, around the time when the swine flu also began in Mexico. I'm not saying that there was a direct correlation by man, but there could be one by the sovereign God. President Obama today lifted an eight-year-old ban on embryonic stem cell research signaling and uh, signing an executive order that he called an important step in advancing the cause of science of America. We will vigorously support scientists who pursue this research, Obama said at a signing ceremony at the White House. And we will aim for America to lead the world in the discoveries it one day may yield. Perhaps God is warning these politicians not to play God in the laboratory, but they do not perceive these warnings, or would, nor would believe them even if it were told them. No doubt there are benefits to this kind of research. However, perhaps God knows that today we, we cure disease, but tomorrow we unleash an abomination. Is swine flu merely one of many abominations yet to come? Uh, and it says here, uh, talks about, well, these all relate, but I quote of the verse in Daniel 12, 11, about 12, 90 days and so forth. And then I talk about, um, uh, see, this image here of the moth and the three coins is this one and the same as the below it, which represents the temple curtains that wrap around the tabernacle on earth and what represents in heaven. The day two are mirroring one another, but that's that's off into another direction. I just want to look at this. Now, as you can see here, as I said before, it spans exactly 1260 plus 1260 letters, which is a seven year period, 360 times seven. All this will be important when we get to the seven years plus the 10 years 
on the 360 calendar between SARS, the very when SARS first broke up, out to when this present coronavirus broke out to the day. And I and as much as I'm doing this in weakness, and you're trying your best to understand me, I know. You can see that I'm about to tell you that the pattern has been 7 plus 10 or 10 plus 7 years and that the distance between the SARS, which was the initial warning, to the outbreak, which is currently shutting down the world, is exactly to the day the number predicted by the picture Cody gave me and along with other events, as we shall see now. Okay, the moth, the moth coin Bible code is itself 1260 plus 1260 letters long as is the tabernacle Bible code, which overlaps it. 1260 plus 1260 days can be another way of expressing a seven-year period, except without the leap month. So I'm acknowledging the leap month there. And that link will probably bring me to uh, leap month cycles in the 360 calendar. Okay. Right. The moth Bible code takes a takes on a 10-year pattern divided up as 7 plus 3 or 3 plus 7. And by the way, that pattern is found throughout the Bible. Um, for instance, seven days of creation plus ten more is the 17th day of the month when the Noah's Ark rested on Mount Ararat. It's when Jesus rose from the dead, three days after Passover. Um, it's often the pattern of, say, the Bible talks about seven heads of dragons and they have ten horns. The total is 17. It's a number associated with uh, Joseph when he was imprisoned and uh, he was 17 years of age. And you can look that up for yourself and see that the number 17 has to do with um, two perfect numbers coming together, 7 and 10. And apparently it has to do with um, victory, overcoming, because um, Jesus overcame the grave on the 17th day of the month. Let's continue. There is 1290 plus 1260 years back. Uh, so I'm going to, I mean, I, I might want to skip this. Well, I'm going to read it, but just simply to say, when I'm talking about how there's 1260 plus 1290 days from this flu to this event, you have to understand it's not only that, but a day can represent a year. And if you count back literal years of the same length in days, you will land on prophesied events like the fall of Babylon and so forth. So this is extremely intricate. It's not just seven years of days. It's seven years of years intersecting seven years of days, which makes it impossible to be chance. Anyways, there is 1290 plus 1260 years back to the fall of Babylon from September 2012. The Moth Code was, to, remember, uh, September 2012 and turned exactly 10 years after uh, when he gave me the Moth Code on, on the Day of Atonement in 2002. The Moth Bible Code was discovered in September 2002 on the Day of Atonement. What I just said. SARS began November 2002. Uh, well, we've already seen that. Uh, I, I, I also somewhere I'll say the middle of November. Well, we know now that the exact date was... November 16th, the middle of November. Okay, that's what I'm referring to there. Hmm, boy, where was I? Oops. Okay. Oh, we might as well, since I've messed it up here, you might as well keep your, your, your eye on that. MERS was, was reported in Saudi Arabia, and that's a coronavirus, one of the seven, um, September 2012. Well, that's not what I'm looking at, but keep that little date in mind. September 2012 for the MERS virus, which killed many, many people terribly. Um, and where am I? Oh, boy. I'm going to pause this until I find it. Well, I found it right away. So, um, let's continue. I did keep in mind that MERS coronavirus that came forth from Saudi Arabia in, oh boy, 
this I, you know what I'll do I'll move that over there so I don't lose it this time and this was that article right so keep that in mind uh, September 2012 for the MERS okay we'll see why that's important in a minute SARS began November of 2002 uh, exactly three years on the 360 calendar. After the moth code was discovered, I wrote the article about the coming flu on October 1st, 2005. That's, that was this one. No, 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 this one. All right. Lord, you are embarrassing me. This is embarrassing. Um explanation of something great and mighty my lord i do it in weakness because that's just what you want praise the lord anyways let's continue exactly three years on the 360 calendar after the, after the moth code was discovered i wrote the article about the coming flu and um october 1st 2005 right october 1st 2005 so i'm referring to Exactly 1,290 days after, exactly, remember that number I referred to out of Daniel 12 and so forth, that is three and a half years, the first case of swine flu was reported, all right, exactly that number of days, the swine flu, the very first case was reported 1,290 days later. And anyway, I'm trying to make a point here that it's paralleling days and years, okay, so I'm just going to move on because this is getting long. Thus, the moth code in 2002 plus three years later was the word from God about the coming flu. Plus three and a half more years is the swine flu. Plus three and a half your years will be 2012 for a total of 10 years. Well, remember, this is being written before 2012. And, um, and if you just skip down to the chart quickly, you know, say so I have this, um, it was before this date and this date. Uh, question mark question 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 will something happen in uh, 10 years later in september 2012 well as i showed you yes it did september 2012 well what a coincidence the mers coronavirus outbreak occurred and now we are seven years later and uh, we are into 17 years later and i'm gonna but i will show you how he just delayed two months uh, that was it, because of these leap months and uh, connected it all together. By delaying, he was he was being patient. So he he did this 10 plus 7 or 7 plus 10 pattern, 17 years, and he actually stretched it using the leap months so that it, he delayed it plus two extra months. So that there were exactly, nevertheless, 17 years to the day between SARS when it broke out and the coronavirus that's happening now when it broke out. They're both actually coronavirus, but... The um, COVID-19 that's currently happening. Okay, so let's we'll come back to um, the chart. Continue to read. On the chart, you'll notice that each of the three points land on either the Feast of Tabernacles or Passover, both of which last seven days. So I'm trying to show you that it's seven years, seven days, seven years of years. This is quite complex thing happening here. And Saddam... Hussein, his death was predicted as well in the many ticker code the exact same day as well ahead of time. And that's good. But that's, uh, you can go read that in, in this post about the, the many, the writing on the wall, the first one, the death of Saddam and, and how code predicted ahead of time. And he had it posted on the forum and on the websites ahead of time before he actually died. Okay, about the following chart. The Lord showed me that the flu would fly on a timeline spanning 10 years. Remember, this is written, 10 years hadn't elapsed yet when I wrote this. Uh, commencing from the discovery of the moth code. It's kind of like, he almost he should have just jumped to this right away. Uh, anyways, the Lord showed me that the flu would fly on a timeline spanning 10 years, commencing from the discovery of the moth Bible code. Well, as I already showed you, exactly 10 years after the moth code on the Days of Awe, right? 
10 days of awe and 10 years later, that's because all this is related, seven days, seven years, 10 days of awe and 10 years later, and the SARS code, and SARS itself means 10 years in Babylonian language, and this code is found in Babylon with Daniel chapter 1 and 2. It goes on and on and on. I mean, it just, it just, it's endless. It's easy to go along any of these rabbit trails, because they really are endless. So, um, okay, so 2002, September, plus 10 years is the MERS, right? I didn't know that then, but the MERS in 2012, okay? It probably preceded, probably in August and so forth. First reports in September. Um, uh, and then there was this, I, I can't remember something. Oh, yeah, the swine flu. Uh, it was in 2009, so that was a seven-year event. And so 10 years from the swine flu is now, right? It, um, it ended up being uh, the end of the swine flu. But uh, anyways, there's, I, did, I talk about how all that worked earlier. But the, it's 3 plus 7 plus the 7 plus 3 pattern is what the Lord is working with. And uh, I had to have to look this up and see if anything did happen in September, October to do with the swine flu. Again, I haven't read this in a long time myself, right? So all this was, uh, this is our history now, but back then it was still future. Okay, so, oh boy. All right, so let's continue. These 10 years, oh yeah, I'm just saying the seven year period itself uh, can be broken into two, three and a half year periods. In the following chart, there is a one month margin that the Lord showed me as was explained in the forum three and a half years ago. The one month margin is just a leap month. So, and basically what I'm saying is, um, if you look down here, okay, you'll see, all right, 10 years, 10 years can be 3,600 3, days, which is a SARS in Babylonian, or it can have its leap month added, which can be 3,630 days for a 10 year period. It can also be, um, 3,660, okay, in a 10-year period. And you can take my, go to my 360 calendar and you can find that out for yourself. Um, where's my 360 calendar? Oh, remember that. Okay, you can go there and see, count the number of days between events and you can see that it just adds a leap month. Matter of fact, you can do that. If you were, if you were to add, if you were to take 1290 plus 1260 days, okay, days, right? This number here, 1260 plus 1290 days, because he's following this pattern, and add that to this number plus its sleep month, you will arrive at, um, what was it again? You'll arrive at, Besides, uh, 6,210 days on the 360 calendar, okay? Well, let's just do that, just to see what I mean. 6,210 days minus uh, a 10-year period on the um, 360 calendar is 2,550 days minus 1,260 days, which is a three and a half year period, is 1,290 days which is the book, number of the book of Daniel with its leap month and so forth and so on. I talk about all that. My point is all these numbers are exact and God has timed things exactly according to the pattern you see on your screen between the SARS outbreak that I talk about in 2002 to what's happening now 17 years later to the day. Now, if it was off a month or off a day, you know, it's not, it's exact. So. Obviously, it's the Lord, and, and then there's this other stuff about years coinciding, and then seven days will represent seven years, and those seven years represent seven years of years going all the way back to the fall of Babylon and, 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 and the revelations to Daniel. It goes on and on. So it's wheel within wheel within wheel, wheel all intersecting as one unit. You know, 10 days of awe, representing the Day of Atonement, plus 10 years from then, you know, is now, plus uh, the 17th day 
is uh, the day of resurrection plus 17 years it leads you to the, the time period between the two events. This sort of thing is, is happening continuously. It's complex beyond description. As a matter of fact, I think now I get into all those little details. I'll tell you what, I've said enough. You can read that for yourself on the screen or find the article. Uh, let's kind of hold it there and you can pause it. And then I will now scroll down. Okay, and you can read the next part if you want. I'll scroll down again uh, to the next part if you want. Okay, and I'll scroll down again to the next part if you want to read it. Oh, this is, look at this actually. You notice the two verses I, I quote here, right? Um, uh, we should read them because it's happening in, in, right, in right now. Uh, Revelation 6, 5 and 6. When the Lamb opened the third seal, I heard... We're reading here. When the Lamb opened the third seal, I heard the living creature say, Come out. Then I saw a black horse that represents famine, and its rider had a balance scale in one hand. Remember the writing on the wall, many techol, even weighed in the balance, and all these images I've been given on my website, right? That's, I've been talking about this over and over again for the last year. Uh, maybe I should do this just to show you the pictures. If you haven't been to the 1260d.com, it's a common image. Oh boy, it's not the best picture to see it, but you'll see there's a scale, that's a picture of Babylon over the earth map. It represents Mystery Babylon covering the whole earth. And anyways, here's the scales of a half shekel Trump coin weighed against the bull market over here on the, you know, on the, other, on the right side. There's a, it forms a balance, right? And the letters in the background is all about being weighed in the balance, weighed in the balance, weighed in the balance. You can look at 1260D and see all that for yourself. Um, okay. When the lamb opened the third seal, I heard the third living creature say, come out. Then I saw a black horse and his rider had a balance scale in one hand. I heard what sounded like a voice from somewhere among the four living creatures. It said, a quart of wheat will cost you a whole day's wage. Three quarts of barley will cost you a day's wages too, but don't ruin the olive oil or the wine, right? And the next verse, okay, so that refers to basically economic collapse and famine, right? And, and uh, we got this, I don't know if things, if things, we're in a recession, maybe it'll go into a depression, I don't know. Uh, we also have the locusts forming in a big part of the world, in the Horn of Africa, but all over, and uh, they will almost certainly bring famine as well. See, it's part of one event happening right now. I talk about that on 1260d.com as well. Next, when the Lamb opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature say, Come, out. Then I saw a pale green horse. Its rider's name was Death and death's kingdom followed behind. They were, I hope people are not going to be stuck on the King James translation. I just, you know, how many people get stuck on, I'm not quoting King James, so please forgive me if you, if you are opposed to this version. Again, look it up for yourself in the King James. Kind of, I'm not too thrilled with this version myself as I'm reading it right now, but that's what I, that's what I did 15 years ago. Anyways, they were given power over one-fourth of the earth and and they could kill its people with swords, famines, diseases, and wild animals. Okay, so this one, this verse is about economic collapse. This verse is about disease and the famines. Okay, we got these two events coinciding right now. That's, that's this, right? I'm saying that um, the third seal is like uh, this here with the scales and the fourth seal is like this with the moth that's what they represent okay well and then i give all the places to go for other articles because i wrote quite a bit about this back in 2002 and three and then updates after that so praise the lord i worked my way through it it's been an hour and 17 minutes of pure frustration <laughs> but I'm just crazy enough to put this out as terribly presented as it has been 
because the Lord makes it difficult for someone to hear at times because he turns his back on a stubborn people and he filters out people so that if they're going to be stubborn they won't listen they won't take the effort to listen they want to be entertained they want the loaves and the fishes but for those who sense that okay this is hard to listen to but he's still right they will work their way through patiently and it's like Moses, you know, going up the mountain. You get through that cloud and that darkness, and then you get to the to the glory of God at the top. And it's like, whoa, God is wonderful after all, <laughs> you know. But it, he had to he had to struggle through that cloud first, which, by the way, oh yes, if you were to look at my articles, you'll see that the uh, moth code actually indeed overlaps Mount Sinai. That's part of the whole thing. About four hundred and ninety letters and days later I tell you what I'm gonna to go to that right now but I've said what I really need to say and if you want to turn this off right now I, I, I understand so I just want to show you that because it's pretty cool I think um, let's just open this here uh, is this the one hmm okay ba -ba 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 -ba. I tell you, I'm going to pause this for a second. Okay, um, yeah. So here's uh, how the Mars SARS moth Bible code overlaps numerically, and uh, you know here's some more stuff. And I'm going to show how you how this this moth represents SARS, overlaps with this mountain by 490 letters, 490 times 3, sorry, letters exactly to form this picture, right? So there's this, this triangle represents a mountain, there it is there, and, uh, and there's a whole lot to that. But uh, 30 jubilees later, which is 490 times 3, or 3 royal jubilees later, it lands exactly, you can see exactly over top of the other code about Mount Sinai, where Moses, it's the text where Moses um, uh, meets God at the burning bush. Um, and so I did, and I want to quickly look at, oops, uh, this is the main picture. You probably may have seen this before, maybe you're not. So this, this is all, well, most, a lot of the pictures put together on one matrix because they are, all these pictures are encoded at 120 letter skips. So I'm, hopefully you can see where my cursor is there. It is over, this is the moth code. It parallels, there's the three coins. All right, this represents what's happening now. And uh, you will see, for instance, um, I mean, it's, this been on the net for, I don't know, 10 years. So you can see even at a glance, if you just read the exposition, the, what's the captions that are written in here, you'll see that I, I say here that this is, see along here, this is seven years long, okay? And that they, they mirror each other. This will overlap over here. This is the Mount Sinai here, okay? And this is the, 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 the burning lamp. Uh, it's a song, a lamp for her and him, I will be a king for them. Yeshua, a lamp for her and him, I will be a king for them. Yeshua, and he, no, and she shall surely shine, and he will show her favor. She will surely shine, and he will show her favor. A lamp for her and him, I will be a king for them, Yeshua. So that's encoded in here in this, this lamp, and along here it says she is the queen. Uh, that is the bride of Christ, and so forth. And that overlaps, and it's, and it's a picture of a serpent on a cross, a serpent on a pole carrying a cross. Okay, so it's quite elaborate. And it's over top the Mount Sinai, and Mount Sinai is burning here, and so this moth coat overlaps the burning moth, 
because it represents a fever. The burning moth, which is coronavirus, produces a fever. The, the, the coronavirus, uh, the, the corona moth, um, 30 jubilees later, overlaps exactly the burning mountain and the burning menorah. But it also, exactly 3,600 letters down, which represents a SARS, which is 3,600 days. You count that down, that, because well, every line is 120 letters. If you count that down, you'll find out that that moth will exactly overlap the burning bush. Now, things are upside down simply because there is no upside down, right side up on this. These, these, uh, all these images flip around at certain mathematical intervals of 1290 years or days and they're flipping around. That's where they're all dated. And so they all overlap one another. And they, and they, you got a picture of these images as like a projected, they, they move around. They, they're not stale images. So anyways, they overlap one another and stuff. And so this, Mar, the, the moth code will overlap uh, this, well, let me just read it. Over to the left here, below this, it says, uh, relative position of the mountain menorah code of, of Exodus with cross dragon code. That's that, this here. Oh, I, there's so much the Lord has done. I just wish I could share it all right now. But note agreement of the base of the menorah with the beam of the cross and the head, neck, body, tail of the dragon. Okay, that's, that's not actually what I want to talk about, but it's all quite amazing itself. But this is what I want to say. And note agreement of the vertical moth pole. That's, that's this. With the burning bush. That's this. Moth overlaps burning bush exactly at 10 times 360. That represents a year. So at exactly 10 years. Remember, SARS means 10 years in Babylonian language. And the pole itself that this is on is itself, as I said, seven years, right? There's 360, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven times 360 plus 10 times 360, well, that's 17 years. Plus the three leap months in that time period is the exact period of time between SARS outbreak and the coronavirus outbreak as I showed you at the beginning, between these two dates, wherever it went to. Right. Here and here. Here and here. Exactly 10 plus 7 years later and 7 plus 10 years later. 7 years to the swine, 10 years to this, 10 years to the MERS outbreak in 2020. Well, September, and seven years to here. And the, the differences are accounted for, and I'm not going to go into it, but they're accounted for because of the, the leap months and stuff like that. But the simple thing to take away is, you can do your own little calculation, you'll see that it works out to exactly 17 times 360 plus the three leap months in that time period. Yeah, 90 days, you'll find out that's the exact number. And then, or you can just do it on my 360 calendar and pump, punch in the numbers. Okay. And I know I didn't get into this, but we're walking through all this right now. The events in the world are working this way through this picture. Well, that's another story, and I do mention it in different places in my 1260d.com and among the numerous articles. I leave that for you to explore. God bless. Thank you for bearing with me. And I love the Lord. I love what he does. I love it that he made it difficult for me. I just think that that's so smart of the Lord or so wise. <laughs> Lord, you set up your screen. So be it. For, few, for the few of you who managed to work your way through all this stuff, I hope you've seen that God has everything under control, and to God be the glory, and um, God bless you. And I also want you to know that I will be putting more of these out, and over time I will get, if the Lord wills, clearer and will, be more, will articulate better as time progresses. 
Uh, that's just what the Lord will do. Okay, but for now, you have to put up with the way it is. Talk to you later. Bye. I mentioned earlier that I have not looked at this article in many years, so, well, I actually forgot about parts two and three. So I'm not going to go over parts two and three in detail, but I just point out quickly that in part two of this uh, post, it's all about Rome and the Catholic Church, and here's the obelisk at the end of, well, it represents um, a false Templar house at the end of an obelisk in Rome. I'll just scan it quickly. I'm not going to get into that one, okay? Second part um, was where I go into detail to explain that the pattern of the 3 plus 7, 3 plus 7 continues into the future, even beyond our future, and, uh, and that it points directly to the year 2020, or 2019 actually, when the uh, virus out virus broke out. I'm just mentioning it, lest someone think, well, I had, I didn't, as you see on this chart, I had no concept of anything happening beyond 2012, but that's not true. In this third one, I show that, that um, there is uh, seven years from 2002 to 2009, then three to 2012, and then therefore seven after that to 2019 and the, the COVID-19 virus that I f thought would happen in continuation with this pattern.